Okay, we're going to take another library, this time uh, Doom Drones 2 from Soundmorph. They were kind enough to give me a copy of it exactly as they sort of sell it with the file names intact and the metadata intact exactly as they deliver it. So I want to have a look at that library. And um, they're one of the vendors who's interested in using UCS, and they're sort of signed on, and they're sort of curious how would they go about sort of tackling their back catalog. So I said, well, let me take one of your libraries and let's have a look, see what we can do. So let's go back to SoundMiner again. I have a, an empty database here and I'm gonna drop in this library called Doom Drones 2. And let's see what it comes in. So we've got a couple hundred, 250 sounds, something like that. And this is the metadata that comes in exactly as they deliver it. So here are the file names over here on the right. You see that they put the name of the library at the very beginning, Doom Drones 2, and then just basically uh, something equivalent of an effects name. So there's no vendor name here, there's no library name, and that's fine. Um, they're using some underscores, I noticed right away. They're numbering some of the files. So the question is, you know, uh, there's also a category, which is really uh, saying real place, real places, digital drones, musical drones, things like that. So the question is, you know, do we want to use this for something? We might say we want to use this as a vendor category, for example, right? Um, or we might see that over here in the file name we have industrial, we have factory, we have machinery, submarine, wind, distant, horror. This could be the vendor category as well if we wanted to. So we have a lot of options. Uh, we have the manufacturers listed here as Soundmorph already. The designers are listed sort of here in the designer field. And the library is already filled in. And we have a notes field, which is a copyright. So. What's the first thing we're going to do? Well, the first thing I would say to do is to assign this a new category ID. But I want to be careful because I do have something here in the category. And if I want to preserve that, I should do that first. So let's say that I want to use this as the vendor category. So let's pull up the workflows window and see what we can do. So I'll clear out what we had. So certainly one thing to do first is just to copy the field from category to vendor category way down here at the bottom, right? So we can do that. And there it is. So I've at least preserved that now so that when I want to assign everything a new cat ID, then this is going to get blown away, then I've preserved that here under vendor category for now. So we see that there's these numbers at the beginning, and I probably don't want those. I want to remove basically some characters at the beginning of vendor category. Well, we have this one called add or remove characters. So Let's just say I want to remove, uh, well, I want to remove actually three, right? Because I want to get rid of this space as well. So remove three characters from the beginning of vendor category. Just like this. And when I run that on all of these. And let's say that I also want to, in the same process, go ahead and take the change case. And let's uppercase the vendor category as well. So when we build the file name, that's a useful thing to have that uppercase. It makes it stand out. So now I run that and fairly quickly you'll see that the vendor category is now. There you go. So I've got all these things. So now I need to assign all these to a category because I want to start filling in this information. So everything's selected already. So I'm just going to right click and I'm going to go to category, assign full. And these are basically going to become designed drones, right? This is the category that best fits this. So when I click this, it's going to go through and it's going to assign that category ID. It's going to fill in the category, subcategory and category full for all of those. And there we go. That's done. And again, I have these real places, I have surreal places, I have digital drone performance, musical drones. So one thing I might consider doing is truncating some of these down a little bit. Um, you know, I might just take off the word places, for example, which would be one thing that I'd probably consider doing. So let's clear these out and just pull up some find and replaces. And now in the vendor category, let's just find space drones which is redundant information, right? We're going to have that assigned over here. So let's remove that. Uh, and you notice I put a space drones because I want to get rid of this space too. I can right click here again and say duplicate. And now let's just get rid of space places, right? Which I don't need that as well. I'm going to duplicate this once more. And let's look at this one, digital drone performance. I think that's, let me double check what it's saying there. Performances. So let's take this one and say, let's remove uh, drone performances. And if I can spell right, this should work and replace these with nothing. The equivalent is that it's going to tidy these up. When I hit run, see how many I got, which ones I screwed up. There we go. Now I have a nice short uh, vendor category, right? Real, surreal, perf uh, digital and musical. So well, that's a great use of vendor category, right? Because that's not too long, It's but it tells people some more information about the file that's not really used that you can't really do easily here in the 
category subcategory. This is sort of this third category. Great. Let's close this out and have a look at where we are. So now we have our category. We, had, we know we need it for the file name. Great. We have a vendor category assigned. Great. We have a manufacturer already. Sound more. That's fine. Um, if we wanted to, we could type the abbreviation here, but let's just leave it as it is, and we'll deal with that when we build the file name. And we have a library, Doom Drones 2. Great. Well, what we don't have so far is an effects name, right? Um, and if we're going to build this new file name, we're going to need something there. So let's let's sculpt that real quick. It's going to be fairly easy to do. I'm going to come back here to the, the workflows. I'm going to clear it out, and I'm going to start by taking the file name because that's the only piece of information I particularly have. You can see it here. And we're going to basically copy that field over. So copy the file name over to the effects name. Now I know that it's going to copy this exactly as it is. So before I even run it, I'm going to just go ahead and say find and replace in the effects name Doom Drones 2 dash space dash space and replace with nothing. The equivalent of stripping that out, right? I don't need that here because I have it in the library. The equivalent is I'm going to be left with this factory abandon 01. Then I'm going to basically come in here, I'm going to duplicate again, and in the effects name, I'm going to replace the underscore with a space, because I don't particularly want the underscores. I want this to be a little more readable, so I'm going to do that. And the equivalent of this should be that when I hit run, oh, lastly, let's say uh, you wanted to, I have this, most people probably don't agree, but I'm going to go ahead and tell it to uppercase the effects name as well, which is just a preference of mine. If you didn't like this, you just leave this off. And when I hit run, basically it's going to go through the file name, Copy that over there, strip out the Doom Drones 2, find and replace the underscore with a space, and there you go. Now I have effects names for everything, right? I don't need Doom Drones 2 there again because it's redundant to the library, and it's also redundant to the category, which is going to be in the file name. So here we go, nice succinct effects names. And I'm really much, pretty much done here. I can close the workflow for a second and kind of look at where we're at. I have everything that I need. So at this point, I can basically embed that. I can embed all these records if I wanted to. Um, just as a safety copy. So before I build these file names, I can just sort of save all of this work I've just done by embedding the metadata. I have it just scripted to a hotkey. You can also right, cl right click and say embed selected records, I should say. But now let's build the file name. Let's say that they want to supply a UCS file name. So now we're going to just basically go back to our workflows, clear this out, pull up the build. And I'm going to skip the user category again because I'm not using it, right? We didn't assign anything to there because as a vendor, we're sort of encouraging people not to use this. This is for users. This is for vendors. So we do have a vendor category. So when we use it as is, it's already uppercase. We did that already. So we can leave it as is. I'm going to take the effects name. And in this case, let's say, uh, you know, you like it capitalized, but you don't think your vendor or you like it uppercase, but you don't think your users will. So let's take the title case and let's... Let's sorry, let's take the effects. So let's take the effects name and let's title case it. The creator ID, in this case, I'm going to use manufacturer instead of designer because this is basically the vendor who's selling the library. I think that's a better use of that field. And the sound source is going to be library, which is Doom Drones 2. Now, again, user data, I could, if I had something else to put here, I don't really want to put the full copyright notice at the end of each file name. I don't think that's really necessary. I'm going to simply ignore the user data. The destination field is going to be the file name. I'm fairly confident I'm not going to even do a test. I'm going to just come here and I'm going to hit run. And you see basically it's building out this new file name structure. So design drone, here's our vendor category, real, surreal, digital, musical, right? Analog performance 11, sound morph, Doom Drones 2. Now, the one thing I probably would have done, and so I'm going to just bypass this and I'm going to come in here and do a find and replace. Again, eventually the lookup tables will probably do all this for you. If Soundmorph had picked an abbreviation and we had included that um, down the line, it will basically do this as part of this step. You won't have to do this, but let's go back to the file name here and let's find Soundmorph and let's replace with Smorph. Just to make it a little shorter, right? So when I select everything, it's just going to go through and do a find and replace. And it should truncate that, make the file name a little bit shorter and a little easier to sort of see and use. There it goes. So I could come back in here and say Doom Drones 2 and just put Drones 2 or even like something like DD2 for Doom Drones 2. And if I had sort of made the agreement or the decision as a vendor that that's the abbreviation I would use for that library, then great. Now it's even shorter, right? Now the file names will be even sort of more succinct and... Um, 
the user might not see immediately that DD2 is Doom Drones 2, but they could certainly figure that out somehow. That could be stored also in a lookup table or that could be just listed. Uh, and if the goal is a shorter file name, then that would work, right? So there you go. I've now created all of these for Soundmorph's Doom Drones 2 in compliance with USC, and this metadata is all embedded. The last step would be to come back here and go to Mirror, Library, then Category, then Subcategory. We'll put it right there in the Downloads again, and we'll come over to Downloads here, and we'll see this one folder is being created called Doom Drones 2, Designed Drone, and within here all the files are being created, and this library is now pretty much ready to send out. And that's it. This library is now done, and we'll move on to the next one.